Well, good half. It was fun half. The first half was fun to watch. We guarded an elite level, shared the ball, played well. And then the second half was just uh, tough to get through. You know, it, uh, we had 10 assists at half, and then we only had two assists the second half. And I was mass subbing, so we lost some of the rhythm to the game. When you sub five guys in, five guys out, that disrupts the rhythm. So some of the rhythm of the second half was due to what I was doing, trying to get bodies in and out of the game with that type of lead. I think the thing would have made it easier if we'd have made some free throws. I think we were 9 for 21 the second half or 24 and did not shoot the free throw very well. So games like this, you make your free throws and the lead stays what it is. But we missed so many free throws. And obviously, uh, we're getting fouled, so you're not getting assists when you get to the foul line. You know, so maybe we were passing the ball OK, but just not making free throws. So I told the guys after the game, it's never as good as you think it is when we watch tape of the first half or as bad as we looked at times in the second half. It's somewhere in between. So we'll go back, study tape, uh, make improvements where we need to. This is a good, good team, a good group of guys that appears to be able to defend at a pretty high level. I said Point Loma, I th think, shot 31% in the close scrimmage, uh, UCSD 28%. And then I, maybe I think uh, Texas Southern maybe shot 22% for the game. So our defense has been pretty solid. And at the end of the day, that's how we're going to win with our defense and our rebounding. You lose uh, Devin and Jeremy last year and kind of have to recreate the backcourt. You knew you kind of had an idea what was coming, but what can KJ and Malachi allow you to do differently this year? What, what do they bring that maybe is a little different than last year? You know, they bring a veteran presence about them that the other two provided, but they're different types of players, you know. Every guard is different, and so Malachi is different than Devin. They're both very good scorers, but they play a little bit different. Malachi, like the fact, he had five assists and no turnovers. KJ had some really good looks today, and I think he's still trying to get comfortable in what we're doing. I mean, he came from Santa Clara when the ball was in his hands 80% of the game. And so he doesn't have it as much, but when he has it, he's got to be effective. And I thought he was. If he'd have made a few of the shots he had, he had good looks that didn't go in. You know, I want his assists a little higher. I think he had three turnovers and no assists today. So he's got to make a few more plays for others when he has an opportunity. But they both play the right, right way unselfish and they came here to win and so obviously they're going to have to sacrifice part of their games that they played at the other schools in order to win and they're surrounded by a lot of other really good players and I think they're both willing to do that and have shown a, a ability to do that for the Aztecs. AG back um, this two part question how happy are you and, and what does he bring? AG is AG is a, a, a effort player, a great rebounder. He's probably our best rebounder, both at the defensive and offensive end. And that's what I said. We have to rebound if we want to win. And he gives us more comfort in the fact that uh, Keyshad does a lot of freshman things out there. You know, he's dribbling through traffic and turning the ball over and, 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 and going to the wrong place sometimes. But he's a wonderful young man and going to be a really good player. AG just gives us a little more stability at that position because he's played it for a year. So as a sophomore, Maybe in a tough environment like at BYU, he'll be more serviceable to come in and play solid minutes. It may not be as spectacular, but the minutes AG gives us because of his experience will be invaluable as we move on with the season. Coach, in that first half, uh, you had your 10th sub in. Uh, AG came in about the eight minute mark. So how much of that uh, you experiencing with your rotations here when you got has to do with, you know, it's early in the season. So what are you looking to experiment when you're playing that? I think we'll play more players this year, bodies on the floor, because we're pressing. We're up 94 feet the entire game. And that, has a, that wears the other team down. So if I'm asking these guys to pick up and press, uh, that's a lot of work. And so I'll go to the bench as we continue to pressure the other team. You know, you play shorter periods when you're picking up 94 feet and turning the, gu turning the guard and trapping and, and playing a scrambling defense. You tend to tire out a little faster. So it's good to have the depth in order to play that way. So this is not a situation where you feel like you're just testing guys out and then maybe later in the season when you guys play a tough opponent, oh, I'm going to put this. Well, some of these guys' minutes are not going to be what they were tonight. I mean, this was a, a big margin victory, and everybody got equal minutes, but that's not the way it's going to be. It's not going to be equal. I'm not going to play guys when they're tired. You know, I want fresh legs out there, but I'm not going to play 11 guys. You know, I might go nine deep, and the 10th guy might get a minute or two, but that, as the season goes on, I'm going to play guys that uh, – are producing at both ends of the floor. And that's always the way it is. You know, your production will 
uh, reflect the minutes you get. And so the, if they're able to show me they're productive when they're out there at both ends of the floor, they'll, they'll get minutes, but it won't be 11 guys. I noticed one of the first guys you subbed in for the UCSD game, and even tonight, was Trey. Is that kind of a guy you could see being the ball handler for the second unit when KJ gets subbed out? Or not? Yeah, usually when I take either KJ or Malachi out, I put Trey in. Right now, I'm kind of mixing Jordan and Matt. That could change because I'm playing Matt some at a power forward and Jordan at a power forward because I think they're, I want them on, you know, they haven't had a chance to be on the floor together, and I want to play them together. You know, some. So we went small for a while today and played him out there with Matt as a power forward and Jordan as a small forward. Do you think Trey's uh, probably best ability is to be able to handle the ball? And yeah, be the backup point guard for those guys, come in and handle the ball. A big part of your fast start was Malachi finding, you know, Jordan in the corner, spreading the floor, getting the ball to guys that were around the perimeter. Uh, when you saw him playing like that early, is that the guy you know and that's how he plays and he's instinctively like that? or? Yeah, well, Jordan, Jordan and Malachi have a great chemistry. You know, they live together, they shoot together, and they have a real chemistry about them. You know, they know we're each other all the time. And I think KJ has that too with Malachi. You know, they find each other. So as we continue to play that way and share the ball and know where each other are, we'll have great offensive production. You know, I told him the second half late in the game, I said, Jordan hit five threes the first half. You guys haven't found him for one look the second half. That's on you. That's not on me. I don't have to call a play every time I want to get Jordan a shot. You have to know where he is. And that's what good basketball teams do. They know where the hot hand is, and they continue to feed it. So I told them I thought the ball was too sticky the second half. They didn't move it freely enough, and, and they'll take that coaching. I told them before the game, you know, the, I talked about Wooden being a great listener. I always say that's Coach Fisher's greatest trait. I said, you have to listen to the message. So you, when I tell you that Jordan's a hot hand and you have to find him, you have to find him somehow, some way. That's not for me to manufacture every play to get him a shot. You have to find him within what we're doing, within the offense, and set a screen for him and get him more looks when he's shooting like that. You mentioned uh, pressing. Um, is that something that you plan to do this season, and, and what's behind the, the move to ramp it up over the last couple of years? Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we've been a pressing team, and, and I just thought with AG and with Keyshad and some of these athletic four men, if I play Matt back there, you know, they're as important as the guards are in a press. They have to know when to come off the ball, be long and athletic, get deflections, all of when we had Billy White and guys like that on that back line. So I just like the, the depth I have at that position along with the depth at guard where I think we can pick up full court. And we may not trap every game, but it has a, a cumulative effect of seeing someone picking you up 94 feet the entire game in your face. It tires the other guard out. If they only have one point guard, he'll be worn out by the end of the game. And then when they bring the second string point guard in, maybe we'll trap a little bit more if he's not quite as good. And so we trapped some in the first half, and I think we got some steals and turnovers, and we'll be selective when we use it. We won't use it all the time, but we'll always be a threat to go. So I think that has an a effect on the other team. They spend more time getting ready for our press than preparing for their half-court offense. It's something that we do, maybe that if other teams don't do, it takes extra time for them to get ready for us. And that shortens the prep in other areas. How do you balance that with going in now to this weekend? We're going to find out, because we're going to pick up. So we're going to pick up and see. It's, you know, altitude affects everybody differently. It's not the same for every person. So it'll be interesting taking the team the altitude to see how some of these guys respond. And they played at altitude, obviously. You know, KJ coming from Santa Clara has played at BYU multiple times. And Malachi, obviously, you know, we'll see how they respond to being there. I know when we had Kawhi, he always seemed to really have a tough time at BYU. So we'll see how everybody responds individually and, and what effect that has on our performance. You lose Jeremy's perimeter defense after last year. Is that the biggest learning curve for KJ and Malachi? They, they're guys who seem to know how to score already. But yeah. uh, how do you – you can't exactly replace Jeremy's defense, but what, what do you do with those guys to try to address that? Yeah, defensively with Jeremy gone, I was concerned and still am. We'll see how it goes with our length at that position. Jeremy was 6'3", 6'4". He had extra length defensively. So sometimes a, a smaller guard can play really hard, but at the end of the day, they're going to raise up and shoot over you at some level. So they're not easy shots but they're harder to shoot over a 6'3 guard than a 6'1 guard. So I'm interested to see how that plays out during the year. I know they guard the ball extremely hard, so they're not bad defensively. They just lack some of the length we've had in the past. 
Coach, I know how much you love defense. Uh, what was going so well for you guys in the first half, and how repeatable is that? Why is that so difficult to continue? You know, our, we're communicating at a high level, you know, so we're talking out there on the floor so there's no confusion. You know, I think people that have come to practice thought this as well as a, they've ever seen an Aztec team communicate on the floor with each other. And so we switch up our, our defenses, you know, whether we're – some days we switch ball screens, some days we don't switch and we can switch up the game plan. And so I thought today we didn't switch a, a ball screen all game. And we did a great job communicating what direction we wanted to send it, where the help was coming from. And so if we communicate and we're on the same page, we're pretty good defensively. Are you confident that you can do that moving forward? Well, we better. We better or I'm going to find a guy that can. So, yeah, they're communicating at a high level, and that's the beauty of having an experienced team. I only have one freshman out there. So these guys have played a lot of basketball, and they know what it is. And, they know how important communication is at the defensive end.